Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Blaine Gibson. 2016 has been billed as the year that will put virtual reality on the map. With the Vive and Oculus Rift headsets both out for the high-end enthusiasts, the last piece of the VR puzzle is PlayStation VR, whose significantly lower price point, coupled with the PS4 install base, which is enormous, gives the medium a real shot at the mainstream. PSVR might not be out for another week, but a number of outlets already have it strapped to their faces. That means the first reviews of the hardware are hitting the web, and we can finally ask, is it good? Is it? And by all accounts, the early answer is, uh, it depends on what exactly you're looking for out of virtual reality. Uh, but before Very we dig definitive. In... Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, but before we dig into the reviews, we should cover the basics. Uh, PSVR launches on October 13th for a very sneaky $399. We say sneaky because you'll also need the PS camera and two move controllers. You can pick all that up in a bundle along with PlayStation VR Worlds, a collection of mini games that includes the getaway London Heist experience for $499. So, unless you already have all the other stuff collecting dust on your shelf, Sony, because, you know, Sony abandoned it. Which, you you know, for the Move controllers isn't, you know, entirely possible. Right, yeah, that's going to be the real cost of the BS for VR for you. Yeah, we have parsed our reviews from websites like IGN, Eurogamer, Tech Radar, Kotaku, The Verge, CNET, and Road to VR, and the early consensus about PlayStation VR is that it is a legit, immersive experience that's perfect for the console audience. Many regard it as an excellent budget option for VR, with a number of technical shortcomings that you would also expect. Uh, tech writer, for instance, called it the promised land for virtual reality on consoles. Wow. Meanwhile, Eurogamer said it was a masterpiece of hardware design. That puts it onto the level playing field with some of its biggest competitors, I think. Uh, despite the praise, those reviews did come with a couple of caveats. The mileage on the shortcomings listed by PSVR reviews may vary, however, some reviewers did find them to be deal breakers for the overall experience. But let's get into the actual reviews. First things first, the actual hardware itself. In general, the tethered headset itself is widely praised as the most comfortable headset on the market, and is particularly friendly towards gamers who wear glasses and Which is, eyes. It, hey, it's important. Nerds. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Caden over there is upset. <laughs> right now, Gus is in New York upset with you. Dumb glasses. Uh, it's also considered a breeze to set up and start playing. I, I wear glasses, it's fine. <laughs> Road to VR loved the design, saying, the ergonomics of PlayStation VR feel class-leading in many ways when compared to the Rift and Vive, with a design that maximizes both field of view and comfort. Another common theme from a number of early reviews was the PSVR's visuals, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Oh, of course they do. Right. Nothing For a simple. Right. Now. For a while now, the big question about the PSVR is how the several-year-old PS4 hardware would be able to run the VR experience compared to its PC heavyweights. By and large, reviewers found themselves really pretty impressed by how PSVR handled itself despite being underpowered. The Verge wrote in its review, it's grainier than its two big competitors, which still look a little fuzzy in their own right, and dark colors can appear muddy but screen resolution isn't the only factor in how good something looks. Sony likes to tout the PSVR's high screen refresh rate as a way to compensate for its lower resolution. And games are in fact quite smooth with very little juddering or latency. Road to VR agreed, stating that PSVR definitely punches above its weight from a virtual standpoint. And a big part of that has to do with the dreaded screen door effect, which is apparently much better on PSVR than on the other headsets, thanks to how it handles pixels. That's good. Yeah, so Road to VR actually called this out specifically, and so did Eurogamer Digital Foundry. Ah, cool. <laughs> For uh, many, the lower but still impressive graphics played the most important part of virtual reality, immersion. Ooh. CNET said in its glowing review, I let out an audible gasp the first time I <gasps> tried Batman Arkham VR. It was a little bit like that. <gasps> it, it felt similar to the first time I demoed the HTC Vive Portal Aperture Robot Repair Demo. That feeling of shocking immersion is certainly ever present. Immersion. Uh, however, there were some dissenters, Kotaku in particular, found games to struggle on the hardware. Uh, writing, from what I've played over the last week, the PlayStation Move controllers, camera, and even the PS4 itself do not appear to be up to the task smoothly running modern VR games. Reviewers also had many great things to say about the early software lineup, which offers a decent mix of short demos and longer experiences. In particular, the critics seemed to love Batman Arkham VR, Super Hypercube, and Battlezone, even if they thought Batman was too short and Battlezone was too expensive. Road to VR actually called its content some of the best they've played on VR to date. However, that love doesn't seem to be reflected in some of the Metacritic scores. The early scores for the handful of reviewed available titles at the moment are 59 for PlayStation VR Worlds, 69 for Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and 72 for Batman Arkham VR. But on to the negatives, of which there are quite a few, which isn't too big of a surprise considering the lower entry price point of PSVR. Despite being impressed by the visuals and the headset itself, reviewers largely agree that Sony's inroad to virtual reality is clearly hamstringed by its aging peripherals. 
Kotaku wrote that PSVR is frustratingly held back by outdated hardware that can't quite do what's being asked of it. The biggest part of that criticism has to do with the Move controllers, which were blasted by just about every review out there, unfortunately. They're inaccurate, constantly jitter when controlled, and barely function for some of the games. Mm. On top of that, the camera loses track of you when you turn too much, and the controllers are obscured, which constantly pulls you out of the experience. And they did say immersion was the most important part. Immersion. At this point, both of those peripherals are getting up there in age, so that's not too big of a surprise. Uh, the Verge commented on this specifically saying, on one hand, Sony deserves credit for seeing the potential in all these things. On the other, it settled PlayStation VR with the worst motion control of any major headset. Wow, that's, that, that, that hurts a little bit. Uh, it should be noted, however, that some didn't find these things to be as bad as others. So I, your mileage may vary. But for others, they were deal breakers. GameSpot in particular said they couldn't recommend PSVR to anybody in its current iteration as a result. At the end of the day, the overall impression given by the PlayStation VR reviews is that if you're looking for an inexpensive foray into VR, it absolutely holds its own against the bigger headsets. It's well designed, it's super comfortable, and it overshoots the technology of the PS4 by providing some impressive visuals with a few downsides. However, there is an element of you get what you pay for. The move controllers can be spotty and the room tracking is extremely limited, limited uh, in terms of the range of motion and the field of view. If you're expecting a top of the line experience, it might not be the headset for you, but it's going to cost you a way less money than, you know, some of the other ones. Yeah. Well, like the, the Vive and the Oculus are both way more expensive. Right. Uh, plus it's got some great exclusive content. Right, which is always really, really good. Um, now that it's all mapped out, it'll be interesting to see how the VR landscape forms. So we have three headsets that each target a slightly different experience. And then of course there's Gear VR, which fits in there somewhere for mobile users. Uh, and all of those things might be enough, or more than enough even, for users to start making informed decisions based on their preference of how they want to consume their VR. Yeah, so what do you guys think of the early reviews of PSVR? Are you planning on picking one up or not? Let us know in the comments. For future updates on all your newly released hardware like VR and all its iterations, like this video and subscribe to The Know. Immersion. Immersion. You're immersed. Immersed. Are you immersed? So immersed.